to the entire world. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. God is good all the time. This is the secret book of John. The disciple John has written a book and this book was held secret. This book was kept away from the general population, from people like you and I. Yet, God has chosen a select generation to unveil these mysteries so that we may begin to know God on a higher plane as one race, God's race, the human race. These mysteries have been hidden and they have been around for many, many years. And the ones that have hidden these mysteries are now aware that the rest of the world will know these secrets and will be fruitful and multiply and use these words that Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, did speak indeed to his disciples. This is just one of the spiritual audiobooks that I have in my spiritual audiobook section. I will be coming forth with more spiritual audiobooks, more apocrypha. If there is anything that you would like to know about the spiritual audiobooks that I have, please leave a comment. If you would like prayer, please leave a comment and I will pray for you. We are one race, God's race, the human race. And we must understand at the end of it all, at the very, very end of it all, it will only be you and God. It will be only God and I. So let us go over together the spiritual audio book of the secret book of John in which Jesus Christ explains mysteries that are not in the Bible. Chapter 1, the teaching of the Savior and the revelation of the mysteries and things hidden in silence, things that he taught to his disciple John. One day, when John, the brother of James, the sons of Zebedee, went up to the temple, it happened that a Pharisee named Arimanos came over to him and said to him, Where is your teacher, whom you have been following? John said to him, He has returned to the place from which he came. The Pharisee said to him, this Nazarene has deceived you badly, filled your ears with lies, closed your minds, and turned you away from the traditions of your parents. When I, John, heard these remarks, I turned away from the temple toward a place of solitude. I was very sad and said within myself, how was the Savior selected? Why was he sent into the world by his father? Who is his father who sent him? For what was he saying when he told us this eternal realm to which you will go is a copy of the imperishable eternal realm, but did not teach us what kind of realm that one is. At the moment I was thinking about this, behold, the heavens opened, all creation under heaven lit up, and the world shook. I was afraid, and behold, I saw within the light a child standing by me. As I was looking, he became like an older person. Again, his appearance changed, and was like that of a servant. Not that there was several persons before me, rather, there was one figure with several forms within the light. These different forms came into view one after another and three forms appeared. He said to me, John, John, why are you doubting? Why are you afraid? Are you not familiar with this figure? Then do not be faint hearted. I am with you always. I am the Father, 
I am the mother. I am the child. I am the incorruptible and the undefiled one. What is, what was, and what is to come. That you may understand what is invisible and what is visible. And to teach you about perfect humanity. So now, lift up your head that you may understand the things I shall tell you today and that you may relate these things to your spiritual friends who are from the unshakable race of perfect humanity. Chapter 2 When I asked if I might understand this, he said to me, The one is a sovereign that has nothing over it. It is God and Father of all. The invisible one that is over all, that is imperishable, that is pure light, no eye can see. It is invisible spirit. One should not think of it as a God or like a God, for it is greater than than a God because it has nothing over it and no Lord above it. It does not exist within anything that is inferior to it since everything exists only within it. It is eternal since it does not need anything for it is absolutely complete. It has never lacked anything in order to be complete. Rather, It has always been absolutely complete in light. It is illimitable since there is nothing before it to limit it. It is unfathomable since there is nothing before it to fathom it. It is immeasurable since there is nothing before it to measure it. It is unobservable since nothing has observed it. It is eternal and exists eternally. It is unutterable since nothing could comprehend it to utter it. It is hanging since there is nothing before it to give it a name. It is immeasurable light, pure, holy, bright. It is unutterable and is perfect in its imperishability. Not that it is part of perfection or blessedness or divinity. It is much greater. It is neither corporeal nor incorporeal. It is neither large nor small. It is impossible to say how much is it or what kind is it for no one can understand it. It is not one among many things that are in existence. It is much greater, not that it is actually greater. Rather, as it is in itself, it is not a part of the worlds or of time. For whatever is part of world was once produced by something else. Time was not allowed to it, since it receives nothing from anyone that would be alone. The one who exists first does not need anything from one who is later. On the contrary, the later one looks up to the first one in its light. For the perfect one is majestic. It is purely and immeasurably great. It is the world that gives a world the life that gives life, the blessed one that gives blessedness, the knowledge that gives knowledge, the good one that gives goodness, the mercy that gives mercy and redemption, the grace that gives grace Not that it is actually like this. Rather, it gives immeasurable and incomprehensible light. 
What shall I tell you about it? Its eternal realm is imperishable. It is quiet. It is silent. It is at rest. And it is before everything. It is the head of all the worlds, and it sustains them through its goodness. Yet we would not know, we would not understand what is immeasurable were it not for one who has come from the Father and has told us these things. Chapter 3 For the perfect one beholds itself in the light surrounding it. This is the spring of the water of life that gives forth all the worlds of every kind. The perfect one gazes upon its image, sees it in the spring of the spirit, and falls in love with the luminous water. This is the spring of pure luminous water surrounding the perfect one. Its thought became active and she who appeared in the presence of the Father in shining light came forth. She is the first power. She preceded everything and came forth from the Father's mind as the forethought of all. Her light resembles the Father's light as the perfect power. She is the image of the perfect and invisible virgin spirit. She is the first power, the glory, Barbello, the perfect glory, the worlds, the emerging glory. She glorified and praised the virgin spirit, for she had come forth through the spirit. She is the first thought the image of the spirit. She became the universal womb, for she precedes everything. The common parent, the first humanity, the Holy Spirit, the triple male, the triple power, the androgynous one with three names, the eternal realm among the invisible beings, the first to come forth. Barbeilo asked the invisible virgin spirit to give her foreknowledge. And the spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, foreknowledge appeared and stood by forethought. Foreknowledge comes from the thought of the invisible virgin spirit. It glorified the spirit and the perfect power Barbalo, for it had come into being through her. She asked again to be given imperishability and the spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, imperishability appeared and stood by thought and foreknowledge. It glorified the invisible one and Barbeilo, for it had come into being through her. Barbeilo asked to be given life eternal, and the invisible spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, life eternal appeared, and they stood together and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbeilo, for they had come into being through her. She asked again to be given truth and the invisible spirit agreed. Truth appeared and they stood together and glorified the good invisible spirit and Barbeilo for they had come into being through her. This is the father's realm of the five. It is the first humanity the image of the invisible spirit, that is, forethought, barbeilo, thought, along with foreknowledge, imperishability, life eternal, 
and truth. This is the androgynous realm of the five. This is the realm of the ten. This is the father. Chapter four. The father entered Barbelo with a gaze, with the pure shining light surrounding the invisible spirit. Barbelo conceived and the father produced a ray of light that was similar to the blessed light, but not as bright. This ray of light was the only child of the common parent that had come forth and the only offspring and the only child of the father, the pure light. The invisible virgin spirit rejoiced over the light that was produced that came forth first from the first power, forethought, or Barbeilo. The father anointed it with goodness until it was perfectly and completely good. For the father anointed it with goodness of the invisible spirit the child stood in the presence of the father during the anointing. When the child received this from the spirit, at once it glorified the Holy Spirit and the perfect forethought, for it had come forth through her. The child asked to be given mind as a companion to work with and the invisible spirit agreed. When the spirit agreed, mind appeared and stood by Christ and glorified Christ and Barbeilo. All these beings, however, came into existence in silence. Mind wished to create something by means of the word of the invisible spirit its will became a reality and appeared with mind. While the light glorified it, word followed will. For Christ, the self-produced God, created everything by the word. Life, eternal will, mind, and foreknowledge stood together and glorify the invisible spirit and Barbeilo, for they had come into being through her. The Holy Spirit brought the self-produced divine child of the spirit and Barbeilo to perfection. Then the child stood before the powerful and invisible virgin as the self-produced God. Christ, whom the Spirit had honored with loud acclaim. This child came forth through forethought. The invisible virgin set this truth, self-produced God, over everything and caused all authority and the truth within to be subject to him. Then the child could understand the universe that is called by a name greater than every name. For that name will be told only to those who are worthy of it. Chapter 5 Now, from the light Christ and from the imperishability by the grace of the Spirit came the four stars that derived from the self-produced God. He gazed about and made the stars stand before him. The three beings present are will, thought, and life. The four powers are understanding, grace, perception, and thoughtfulness. Grace dwells in the eternal realm of the star Armozul, 
who is the first angel. These three realms are also there. Grace, truth, and form. The second star is Oreo and has been appointed over the second eternal realm. These three realms are also there. Afterthought, perception, and memory. The third star is Davita and has been appointed over the third eternal realm. These three realms are also there. Understanding, love, and idea. The fourth eternal realm has been set up for the fourth star. Elioth. these three realms are also there. Perfection, peace, and Sophia. These are the four stars that stand before the self-produced God and the 12 eternal realms that stand before the great self-produced child, Christ. By the will and grace of the invisible spirit, the 12 realms belong to the self-produced child and thus everything was established by the will of the Holy Spirit through this self-produced one. Again, from the foreknowledge of the perfect mind, through the expressed will of the invisible spirit and the will of the self-produced one, came the perfect human, the first revelation, the truth, the virgin spirit named the human Pedra Adamus and appointed Pedra Adamus to the first eternal realm of the great self-produced one, Christ, along with the first star, Armozel. The powers are there, too. The invisible one also gave Pedra Adamus an unconquerable power of mind. Peter Adamus glorified and praised the invisible spirit by saying, Everything has come into being through you, and everything will return to you. I shall praise and glorify you, and the self-produced one, and the eternal realms, and the three, father, mother, child, and Perfect power. Pigger Adamus appointed a son, Seth, to the second eternal realm, along with the second star, Oriel. In the third realm was stationed the family of Seth, with the third star, Davita. The souls of the saints were stationed there. In the fourth eternal realm were stationed the souls of those who were ignorant of the divine fullness. They did not repent immediately, but continued to be ignorant for a while and then repented. Later, they are with the fourth star, Eileth, and the creatures that glorify the invisible spirit. Now, Sophia who is the wisdom of afterthought and who represents an eternal realm, conceived a thought. She had this ideal herself and the invisible spirit and foreknowledge also reflected upon it. She wanted to give birth to a being like herself without the permission of the spirit. The spirit had not given approval without her lover and without his consideration. Her partner did not give his approval. She did not find anyone who agreed with her and she considered this matter without the spirit's permission or any knowledge of what she had decided. Nonetheless, she brought forth a child 
and because of the unconquerable power within her, her thought was not an idle thought. Rather, something came out of her that was imperfect and different in appearance from her. When Sophia saw what her desire had produced, it changed into the figure of a snake with a face of a lion. Its eyes were like flashing bolts of lightning. She surrounded it with a bright cloud and put a throne in the middle of the cloud so that no one could see it except the Holy Spirit, who is called the Mother of the Living. She named her child Yaldaboath. Yaldaboath is the first ruler who took great power from his mother. Then he left her and moved away from the realms where he was born. He was strong and created for himself other realms by means of a bright flame of fire that still exists. He made it with the mindfulness that is in him and produced his own authorities. The name of the first is Athoth whom generations of human beings call. The second is Hamas, who is the jealousy eye. The third is Kalila, Oumbri. The fourth is Yabel. The fifth is Adonaios, who is called Seboeth. The sixth is Cain, whom generations of human beings call the sun. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is Abrisin. The ninth is Yobel. The tenth is Armopiael. The eleventh is Melker Adonin. The twelfth is Belias, who is over the depths of the underworld. Yadaboath stationed seven kings one for each sphere of heaven. The reign over the seven heavens and five to reign over the depths of hell. He shared his fire with them, but did not give away any of the power of the light that he had taken from his mother. For he is a being of ignorant darkness. When the light mixed with the darkness, it made darkness brighter. When the darkness mixed with the light, it dimmed the light. The result was neither light nor darkness, but rather gloom. This gloomy ruler has three names. The first name is Yadaboath. The second is Sacchaeus. The third is Samuel. He is wicked because of the mindfulness that is in him. For he said, I am God, and there is no other God besides me, since he did not know from where his own strength had come. The rulers created themselves seven powers. The powers in turn created for themselves six angels apiece until there were 365 angels. These are the names of the potentates and their corresponding physiques. The first is Athoth and has the face of a sheep. The second is Eloeus and has the face of a donkey. The third is Astophios and has the face of a hyena. The fourth is Yao and has the face of of a snake with seven heads. The fifth is Sabaoth and has the face of a dragon. The sixth is Adonin and has the face of an ape. The seventh is Sabotaios and has the face of flaming fire. This explains the seven days of the week. Yaldaboath had many faces 
in addition to all of these, so that he can show whatever face he wanted. When he was among the angels, he shared his fire with them and lorded it over them because of the glorious power he had from his mother's light. This is why he called himself God and disregarded the realm from which he had came. He united seven of his powers and thought with the authorities that were with him. When he spoke, it was done. He named each of his powers, beginning with the highest. The first power is goodness and is with the first authority, a thought. The second power is forethought and is with the second authority, Eloaeus. The third power is divinity and is with the third authority, Astrophaeus. The fourth power is lordship and is with the fourth authority, Yao. The fifth power is kingdom and is with the fifth authority, Sabioth. And the sixth power is jealousy and is with the sixth authority, Edoin. The seventh power is understanding and is with the seventh authority, Sabateos. These beings have spears in the heavenly realms. The powers were given names from the glory above, but the names could not destroy the powers. For while the names given them by their creator were powerful, the names given them from the glory above could bring about their destruction and loss of power. That is why they have two names. Yadaboath organized everything after the pattern of the first eternal realms that had come into being. For he wished to create beings that are like the imperishable ones. Not that he had seen the imperishable ones, rather the power that is in him, that he had taken from his mother, produced the pattern for the world order. When he saw creation all around and the throng of angels around him that had come forth from him, he said to them, I am a jealous God and there is no other God besides me. But by making this announcement, he suggested to the other angels with him, there is another God. For if there were no other God, of whom would he be jealous? Then the mother began to move around. She realized that she was lacking something when the brightness of her light diminished. She grew dim because her lover had not collaborated with her. I said, Lord, what does it mean that she moved around? The Lord laughed and said, Do not suppose that it happened the way Moses said, above the waters. No. When she recognized the wickedness that had taken place and the robbery her son had committed, she repented though she had become forgetful in the darkness of her ignorance. She began to be ashamed and agitated. This agitation is the moving around. The arrogant one took power from his mother. He was ignorant, for he thought that no other power existed except his mother. He saw the throng of his angels he had created and exalted himself over them. When the mother realized that this dark shadow had come into being imperfectly, she understood that her lover had not collaborated with her. She repented with many tears. The whole realm of fullness of the invisible virgin spirit heard her prayer of repentance and offered praise for her. And the Holy Spirit poured some of this fullness upon her for her lover had not come to her before but now he did come to her down through the realm of fullness so that he might restore what she lacked she was taken up not to her own eternal realm but instead to a position just above her son she was to remain in this ninth heaven until she restored what 
was lacking in her. A voice called from the exalted heavenly realm. Humanity exists and the child of humanity, the first ruler, Yadaboeth, heard this voice and thought that it had come from his mother. He did not realize its source. It was from the heavenly parent, the completely perfect forethought, the image of the invisible one, that is, the father of everything, through whom everything came into being the first humanity. She taught these things and revealed herself in human shape. The entire realm of the first ruler quaked and the foundations of hell shook. The bottom side of the waters above the material world was lit up by the image that had appeared. When all the authorities and the first ruler stared at this appearance, they saw the whole bottom side as it was lit up. And through the light, they saw the shape of the image in the water. Yaldaboeth said to the authorities with him, Come, let us create a human being after the image of God and with a likeness to ourselves so that this human image may give us light. They created with their powers and copied the features that had appeared with each of the authorities contributed a physical feature corresponding to the figure of the image they had seen. They created a being, the perfect first humanity and said, let us call it Adam that its name may give us power of light. The powers began to create. The first power, goodness, created a soul of bone. The second, forethought, created a soul of sinew. The third, divinity, created a soul of flesh. The fourth, lordship, created a soul of marrow. The fifth kingdom created a soul of blood. The sixth jealousy created a soul of skin. The seventh understanding created a soul of eyelid. The throng of angels stood by and received these seven physical substances from the authorities. Then they could create a network of limbs, trunk, with all the parts properly arranged, the first angel began by creating the head. Etaforop, Abron created the head. Minigesi Troith created the brain. Astakim, the right eye. Tom Smoka, the left eye. Euronimos, the right ear. Bisum, the left ear. Akirum, the nose. Benin Ephraim, the lip. Amin, the teeth. Basaladim, the tonsils. Akon, the uvula. Adaban, the neck. Kaman, the vertebrae. Dirko, the throat. Tibor, the right shoulder. The left shoulder. Minikron, the right elbow. The left elbow. Abitron, the right palm. Uthen, the left palm. Cruz, the right hand. Bilue, the left hand. Trinu, the fingers of the right hand. Babel, the fingers of the left hand. Crema, the fingernails. Estrops, the right breast. Biruf, the left breast. Berum, the right armpit. Arium, the left armpit. Arki, the belly. Thutu, the navel. Sinfin, the abdomen. Okotopi, the right rib. Zabidu, the left ribs. 
Barrios, the right hip. Benoit, the left hip. Abenaki, the marrow. Kimonarin, the bones. Gisole, the stomach. Agumama, the heart. Bano, the lungs. Sastrapa, the liver. Anisimila, the spleen. Tapito, the intestines. Biblo, the kidneys. Riori, sinews. Tafrio, the back. Ipus Foba, the veins. Binaborin, the arteries. Atemsphere, the breath in all the limbs. Intholin, all the flesh. Beduak, the vagina on the right. Aribi, the penis on the left. Elo, the testicles. Sarma, the genitals. Gom Kiarkaba, the right thigh. Nibrith, the left thigh. Persium, the muscles on the right leg. Asakalas, the muscles on the left leg. Aramoath, the right leg. Eminem, the left leg. Nux, the right shin. Tipilon, the left shin. Akiel, the right knee. Nimi, the left knee. Piathrone, the right foot. Boabel, its toes. Tracon, the left foot. Fikna, its toes. Miyama, the toenails. Labranorum, the angels appointed over all these parts of the physical body are Athoth, Hamas, Kalia, Yabiel, Saboat, Cain, Abel. Other angels work in the limbs, in the head, Diolimdraza, in the neck, Yamax, in the right shoulder, Yakilub, in the left shoulder, Ariton, over arrangement, Ariakam, over the whole impulse, Riaranako. The four sources of the demons that are in the entire body are appointed heart, cold, wetness, dryness. And the mother of them all is matter. The one that is lord over heat is Floxfa. The one who is lord over cold is Arakotos. The one who is lord over what is dry is Irimako. The one who is lord over wetness is Arturo. The mother establishes among them our North Karas, for she is unlimited and mingles with them all. Indeed, she is matter, for through her the demons are nourished. The four principal demons are Ephemphi, the one of pleasure, Yoko, the one of desire. Nintofini, the one of grief. Bleomen, the one of fear. The mother of them all is sensation. Atraputo. From these four demons have come passions from grief. Come jealousy, envy, Pain, distress, hard heartness, anxiety, sorrow, and so forth. From pleasure come much evil, vain conceit, and the like. From desire come anger with bitterness, intense lust, greed, and the like. From fear come terror, servility, anguish, and shame. All of these passions resemble what is valuable as well as what is bad. Anaro, the head of the material soul, understands there is true nature, for she dwells with sensation, a chupito. There is the number of angelic, in all they number 365. They all work together until they complete each limb of the physical and material body. 
There are other angels over the remaining passions, and I have not told you about them. If you want to know about them, the information is recorded in the book of Zoroaster, chapter 10. All the angels and demons work together until they fashion the physical body, but for a long time their creation did not stir or move at all. When the mother wanted to take back the power she had relinquished to the first ruler, she prayed to the most merciful parent of all. With a sacred command, the parents sent five stars down to the realm of the angels of the first ruler. They advised him with his purpose in mind that they might recover the mother's power. They said to Yadaboth, breathe some of your spirit into the face of Adam and then the body will arise. He breathed his spirit into Adam. The spirit is the power of his mother, but he did not realize this because he lives in ignorance. Thus, the mother's power went out of y'all to both and into the physical body that had been made to be like the one who is from the beginning. The body moved and became powerful and is enlightened. At once, the rest of the powers became jealous. Although Adam had come into being through all of them, and they had given their power to this human, yet Adam was more intelligent than the creatures and the first ruler. When they realized that Adam enlightened and could think more clearly than they and was enlightened and was free of evil, they took and threw Adam into the lowest parts of the whole material realm. The blessed, benevolent, merciful parent had compassion for the mother's power that had been removed from the first ruler. For the ruler might be able to overpower the physical, sensible body once again. With a benevolent spirit, a great mercy, the parent sent a helper to Adam, an enlightened afterthought from the parent who was called life. She worked with all that was created, laboring with it, restoring it to fullness, teaching about the descent of the seed of light, teaching that the way of ascent is the same as the way of descent. Enlightened afterthought was hidden within Adam so that the rulers would not recognize her. Then afterthought would be able to restore what the mother lacked. Chapter 11. The human being Adam was revealed through the bright shadow within, and Adam's ability to think was greater than that of all the creatures. When they looked up, they saw that Adam's ability to think was greater than theirs. So, they derived a plan with the whole throng of rulers and angels. They took fire, earth, and water, and combined them with the four fiery winds. They pounded them together and made a great commotion. The rulers brought Adam into the shadow of death so that they might produce a figure again. But now, from earth, water, and fire, and the spirit that comes from matter, that is, from the ignorance of darkness and desire and their own contrary spirit. This figure is the tomb the newly created body that these criminals put on the human as a fetter of forgetfulness. Thus, Adam became a mortal human being, the first to descend and become estranged. The enlightened afterthought within Adam, however, would rejuvenate Adam's mind 
the rulers took Adam and put Adam in paradise. They said, Eat and be merry, but their pleasure is bitter and their beauty is perverse. Their pleasure is a trap. Their trees are evil. Their fruit is deadly poison. Their promise is death. They put their trees of life in the middle of paradise. I shall teach you the secrets of their life as it relates to the plan they devise and the nature of their spirit. The root of their tree is bitter. Its branches are death. Its shadow is hatred. A trap is in its leaves. Its blossom is bad ointment. Its fruit is death. Desire is its seed and it sprouts in darkness. The dwelling place of those who taste of this tree is the underworld, and darkness is their resting place. But the rulers stood in front of what they call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is actually the enlightened afterthought. They stayed there, so that Adam would not behold its fullness and thus discover Adam's own shameful nakedness. I was the one, though, who caused them to eat. I said to the Savior, Lord, was it not the snake that instructed Adam to eat? The Savior laughed and said, The snake instructed them to eat of wickedness pregnancy, lust, and destruction, so that Adam would be of use to the snake. Adam knew about the disobedience against the first ruler because the enlightened afterthought within Adam restored Adam's mind to be greater than that of the first ruler. The first ruler, in turn, wanted to recover the power that he himself had passed on to Adam. So he brought forgetfulness upon Adam. I said to the Savior, What is this forgetfulness? The Savior said, It is not as Moses wrote, and you heard. For he said in his first book, He caused Adam to fall asleep rather this forgetfulness made Adam lose all sense. Thus, the first ruler said to the prophet, I shall make their minds sluggish. Chapter 12. Then enlightened afterthought hid herself within Adam. The first ruler wanted to take her from Adam's side, but enlightened afterthought could not be apprehended. While darkness pursued her, it did not apprehend her. The first ruler took out part of Adam's power and created another figure in the form of a female. Like the afterthought that had appeared, he brought forth the power that he had transferred from the original human being to this female creature. It did not happen. However, the way Moses said, Adam's rib. Adam saw the woman beside him. At once, enlightened, afterthought appeared and removed the veil that covered his mind. The drunkenness of darkness left him. He recognized this being that was like him and said, This is now bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and will join himself to his wife, and the two of them will become one flesh. For he will be sent a lover, and he will leave his father and his mother. Our sister, Sophia, is the one who descended in an innocent manner to restore what she lacked. For this reason, she was called life. That is, 
the mother of the living. Through sovereign forethought and through her having the living tasted perfect knowledge. As for me, I appeared in the form of an eagle upon the tree of knowledge. That is actually the afterthought of the pure, enlightened forethought. I did this to teach the human beings and awaken them from their deep sleep. For the two of them were fallen and realized that they were naked. Afterthought, too, appeared to them as light and awakened their minds. Chapter 13 When Yadaboeth realized that the humans had rejected him, he cursed his earth. He found the woman as she was preparing for her husband, who was lord over her. He did not know the mystery that had come into being through the sacred command. The two humans were afraid to denounce Yadabov, but he displayed his own ignorance to his angels. He threw the humans out of paradise and cloaked them in thick darkness. The first ruler saw the young woman standing next to Adam and noticed that the enlightened afterthought of life had appeared in her, yet Yaldaboth was full of ignorance. So when the forethought of all realized what was happening, she dispatched emissaries and they stole life out of Eve. The first ruler raped Eve and produced in her two sons, a first and a second, Elohim and Yahweh. Elohim was the face of a bear. Yahweh was the face of a cat. One is just and the other unjust. He placed Yahweh over the fire and the wind, and he placed Elohim over the water and the earth. He called them by the names Cain and Abel, for he meant to deceive. To this day, copulation has persisted because of the first ruler. He planned the lust for reproduction within the woman who was with Adam. Through copulation, the first ruler produced duplicate bodies, and he breathed some of his contrary spirit into them. He placed these two rulers over the elements that they might rule over the bodily tomb. When Adam came to know what his own foreknowledge was like, he produced a son like the child of humanity. He called him Seth, after the child in the eternal realms. Similarly, the mother sent down her spirit, which is like her and is a copy of what is in the realm of fullness. For she was about to prepare a dwelling place for the members of the eternal realms who would come down. The human beings were made to drink water of forgetfulness by the first ruler so that they would not know from where they had come. For a while, the seed of light was cooperative, yet everything happened with a purpose. That when the spirit comes down from the holy realms, this spirit may rise up the seed of light and heal it of what it lacks that the eternal realm of fullness may be holy, lacking nothing. Chapter 14 I said to the Savior, Lord, will all the souls be led safely into pure light? He answered and said to me, These are great matters that have arisen in your mind, and it is difficult to explain them to anyone except those of unshakable race, those upon whom the spirit of life will descend and whom the spirit will empower will be saved 
and will become perfect, worthy of greatness and free of all evil and interest in wickedness in that realm. They are interested only in the imperishable and they are always concerned with that without anger, jealousy, envy, desire, or any greed. They are affected only by their existence in the flesh and even as they wear the flesh, they look forward to the time when they will be met by those who receive them. Such people are worthy of the imperishable, eternal life and calling, for they endure everything and bear everything as to finish the contest and obtain eternal life. I said to him, Lord, what about the souls of the people who have not lived in this way, but upon whom the power and the spirit of life have descended nonetheless. What will happen to them? He answered and said to me, If the spirit descends upon them, they most certainly will be saved and transformed. Power must descend upon every person, for without it, no one could stand. After birth, if the spirit of life grows and the power comes and strengthens the soul, no one will be able to lead this soul astray with evil actions. But people upon whom contrary spirits descend are misled by the spirit and lose their way. I said, Lord, where will the souls of these people go when they leave the flesh? <laughs> he laughed and said to me, The soul that has more power than the contemptible spirit is strong. She escapes evil. And through the intervention of the imperishable one, she is saved and is taken up to eternal rest. I said, Lord, where will the souls go of the people who do not know to whom they belong? He said to me, The contemptible spirit grows stronger in such people as they lose their way. The spirit lays a heavy burden on the soul, leads her into evil actions, and hurls her down into forgetfulness. After the soul leaves the body, she is handed over to the authorities who have come into the being through the first ruler. They bind her with chains, throw her into prison, and abuse her until finally she emerges from forgetfulness and acquires knowledge. This is how she attains perfection and is saved. I said, Lord, how can the soul become youthful again and return into her mother's womb or into humanity? He was glad when I asked about this. And he said to me, truly blessed are you, for you understand the soul needs to follow another soul in whom the spirit of life dwells. Because she is saved through the spirit, then she will never be thrust into flesh again. I said, Lord, where will the souls go of people who once had knowledge, but then turned away? He said to me, they will be taken to the place where the miserable angels go, where there is no repentance. They will be kept there until the day when those who have blasphemed against the Spirit will be tried and punished eternally. Chapter 15 I said, Lord, where did the contemptible Spirit come from? He said to me, The common parent is great in mercy. The universal Holy Spirit, the one who is compassionate 
and who labors with you. That is, the afterthought of enlightened forethought. The parent raised up the offspring of the perfect human generation with the thought and the eternal light of humanity. When the first ruler realized that these people were exalted above him and could think better than he, he wanted to grasp their thought. He did not know that they were surpassed him in thought so that he would be unable to grasp them. He devised a plan with his authorities who are his repulsive fate, who are his powers. Together, they raped Sophia and produce something repulsive, fate, the final, fickle, bondage. Fate is like this because powers themselves are fickle. To the present day, fate is tougher and stronger than anything else that gods, angels, demons, and all the generations of human beings may confront. For from fate have come all iniquity, injustice, and blasphemy, the bondage of forgetfulness and ignorance, and all burdensome orders, weighty sins, and great fears. Thus all creation has been blinded so that none might know the God that is over them all. Because of the bondage of forgetfulness, their sins have been hidden, they have been bound with dimensions, times, and seasons, and fate is Lord of all. The first ruler regretted everything that had come into being through him. Once again, he made a plan and decided to bring a flood upon the human world. The enlightened greatness of forethought, however, warned Noah. He in turn announced this to the entire human family, the children of humanity. But those who were strangers did not listen to him. It did not happen the way Moses said. They hid in a ark. Rather, they hid in a certain place, not only Noah, but also many other people from the unshakable race. They entered that place and hid in a bright cloud. Noah knew about his supremacy and with him was the enlightened one who had enlightened them since the first ruler had darkness upon the whole earth. The first ruler formulated a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of humanity that they might take women and raise a family for their pleasure. At first, they were unsuccessful. When they had proven to be unsuccessful, they met again and devised another plan. They created a contemptible spirit similar to the spirit that had descended in order to adulterate souls through the spirit the angels then changed their appearance to look like the partners of these women and filled the women with the spirit of darkness that they had concocted and with evil. They brought gold, silver, presents, copper, iron, metal, and all sorts of things. They made the people who follow them suffer. leading them astray and deceiving them. These people grew old without experiencing pleasure and died without finding truth or knowing the God of truth. In this way, all creation was forever enslaved. From the beginning of the world until now, the angels took women and from the darkness, they produced children similar to their spirit. They closed their minds and became stubborn through the stubbornness of the contemptible spirit until the present day have been bound with dimensions. Chapter 16 Now, I am the perfect forethought of all. 
I transformed myself into my offspring. I came into being and went down all the paths of life. For I am the abundance of light. I am the remembrance of fullness. I went into the realm of great darkness and continued until I entered the middle of the prison. The foundations of chaos shook and I hid from the inhabitants of chaos for they are evil. So they did not recognize me. A second time I returned and went on. I had come from the inhabitants of light. I am the remembrance of forethought. I entered the middle of darkness and the center of the underworld and turn to the task before me. The foundations of chaos shook and were about to fall upon those who dwell in chaos and destroy them. I hurried back to the root of my light that the inhabitants of chaos might not be permanently destroyed. Yet again, a third time, I went forth. I am the light that dwells in light. I am the remembrance of forethought. I intended to enter the middle of darkness and the center of the underworld. I brightened my face with the light from the consummation of this world and entered the middle of this prison, the prison of the body. I said, let whoever hears arise from deep sleep. A sleeper wept and shed bitter tears, wiping them away. The sleeper said, Who is calling my name? What is the source of this hope that has come to me? Dwelling in the bondage of prison, I said, I am the forethought of pure light. I am the thought of the virgin spirit who has raised you to a place of honor. Arise, remember that you have heard and trace your root, for I am compassionate. Guard yourself against the angels of misery, the demons of chaos, and all who entrap you. And beware of deep sleep and the trap at the center of the underworld. I raised the sleeper and sealed the sleeper in luminous water with five seals that death might not prevail from that moment on. Behold, now I shall ascend to the perfect realm. I have finished discussing everything with you. I have told you everything for you to record and communicate secretly to your spiritual friends. For this is the mystery of the unshakable race. The Savior communicated these things to John for him to record and safeguard. He said to him, Cursed is everyone who shall trade these things for a present, food, drink, clothes, or anything else. These things were commanded to John as a mystery. And afterwards, the Savior disappeared at once. Then John went to the other disciples and reported what the Savior had told him. Jesus Christ. Amen. We have reached the conclusion of the secret book of John. The disciple of Jesus Christ, the brother of a fellow disciple, James, the sons of Zebedee. These writings have been hidden. And Jesus said, There shall be writings that are hidden and they will be revealed to a select generation. Jesus Christ has anointed us with cloven tongues of fire and wisdom. We shall use this wisdom and be fruitful and multiply and spread the word of God. I have more spiritual audiobooks for you all in my spiritual audiobook playlist. Please subscribe, like, comment. If you would love prayer, please leave a prayer request in the comments. If you have questions about this audiobook, leave a comment. 
If there are different audiobooks that you would love to hear, leave them in the comments. To the entire world, be blessed and stay phenomenal. Remember, plan strategically for your life, or your life will strategically plan for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good all the time.